Welcome to this week's uh, Crypto Mastery class. Uh, my name is Brett, and I'm from Moonstream, and I uh, should be able to see my screen here. And um, by the way, if you'd like to learn more about what we do, if you're watching on any of the social channels, you can learn more at moonstream.io. And even some free resources like our newsletter every week, signing up for this class where you can ask questions live and our trader success checklist. So let's go ahead and uh, dive in. Uh, I think I did see a couple questions here. Okay. Um, Paul saying indicators, moving averages. Uh, yeah, Paul, we can talk about that. We can talk about lots of things related to the indicators uh, that we use as, re as well as regular ones. Good segue into um, moving averages. Why don't we start there? Uh, you know, I like simplicity over complexity. Some traders and often new traders and investors get caught up in what's the latest and greatest fancy new super signal that has been hidden from them all this time. And it's, it just doesn't exist. Uh, the simple things often are best and the moving averages are a great example. So uh, why don't we do this? I'll turn off all the other things for now, and then we'll kind of re uncover those. This is a chart of Solana. I will hop over to Bitcoin here briefly, but um, you know, look, uh, I didn't get too excited about this rally because when we're underneath these moving averages and these specifically, I like the 21 day and the 50 day exponential moving average. And these are these lines here, orange and green. And uh, so um, basically when they're underneath though, it's kind of like being under the ice. And when you fall under the ice, you're drowning. And um, <clears throat> and you below, you know, and, and so pushing up above it is getting, trying to get back above the ice. Uh, by the way, guys, I, I'm having some uh, an electrical work here done. If at any point I'm gone, uh, the class is over. <laughs> They're installing a new air conditioning system on the roof. And at any point they might do that. So I'm going to try to get through this uh, quickly. So um, anyway, but so similarly to Solana here on Bitcoin up top, down a little bit, started up, you know, we had this little rally right up to that 50 day exponential moving average. I also like it on the weekly time frame. But um, for now, uh, 21 and 50 day exponential moving averages, you know, some people watch a simple moving average and there's a time and a place for that. And, um, you know, but really this is my go-to. You can get overwhelmed by all kinds of moving averages as, as well. Uh, one I do like, another free one is the, um, uh, the uh, ribbon, the, um, the EMA ribbon here. And this is not the one, I think that the one I want is the EMA ribbon here. So um, let's see, Turner Day, I forget what this thing's called. Basically, it's when all of these uh, condense moving average ribbon, that's not it. They have a million of these different things. So I usually go by the one that has the most on here. Let's see this EMA ribbon there. That's a pretty good one. So let me get rid of that first one there. We've got too much on the chart, but here's the point. When you see these uh, moving averages condensing together. Generally, that's uh, when a big move is coming. And um, when they get too far away from it and they're spread out like this, things are overbought. And um, <clears throat> so um, basically this here, getting this far above the exponential moving averages and the ribbon, you know, this was a good telltale sign. This was getting overbought here. And of course, we have been talking about these peaks all the way along for the last couple of months. And, uh, and so what I'm specifically looking for, though, and, and this is a good clue, is when is this exact scenario going back to January of last year of 2024, when we push up and come back on these ribbons here and it gets very condensed like that and we can get back above it, this acts as very strong support. And these are things you can sort of, I, I would say, take to the bank. But, um, you know, um, that's when this really took off. And so... Uh, I'm just going to drop a note so these guys, please don't shut off the power uh, power for an hour. Cool. And to upper floor. Got it. And maybe they can just do it at the fuse box. So um, guys, we're working without a net here. <laughs> Some of you know I've been dealing with 90 degree heat the last uh, since I came back from Miami. And because uh, the AC system had died. So I got a team of people here putting in a brand new inside outside unit anyway life goes on the show must go on so here we are in this downward bull some call it a bull flag you know bull flags typically don't last this long this is a downward trending channel um you know these things don't have to be exact if it looks like a duck and sounds like a duck well you know 
then it's a duck. <laughs> so with this, uh, if we, if and when we do see this breakout, and I'll just give you an idea of what I'm looking for here, because this being the flagpole, um, typically, let me redo that because this would be a short shortened flagpole. I think that, no, it's not that. Um, we have a small flagpole here. So the near-term price target and measured move, um, and some might argue with this, uh, the purists with me, because typically you'll do it from the, the way down here. And, um, but, you know, this puts us right up to around 100,000, which I've been saying. And, um, you know, this may have been the bounce. I, I do think we're going to come down and retest 54K on Bitcoin and, um, <clears throat> or ideally put in a higher low. But uh, this, you know, we're not out of the woods just yet. So that's the deal on the EMA ribbon. I'll turn that thing on and off from time to time. Right now, I'm going to turn it off because uh, for the most part, I'm just concerned about are we below the EMA or above these? And you guys have heard me say the analogy that uh, when we're below the 50 period, like right back here, we fell through the ice, the thin ice, the 21 day, the 21 period is the thin ice. And then when we break around below the 50, that's the thicker ice. That's like when you're up in Alaska and you fall through the lake. Typically, you fall out, you hit your head, try to get back above the ice, back down, drowning, drowning, push, try to get above the thin ice, couldn't make it, drowning all the way down. And I don't know where these analogies come from. Maybe down here, that means you're dead and your soul is flat. I don't know. There's, but let's not go for, too far into it. Point being... When we get back above the thin ice, that's okay, the 21 day, but really why I want to be on top of the thick ice. That's when we're safe and we can go uh, back on the lake and skate around and uh, do whatever, play hockey, whatever you want to do. Okay. So, um, so, so, but that is, you know, on when in doubt, I always zoom out. The longer term timeframes are the most important. And so right now on the weekly, we really um, are seeing having trouble breaking above that 21 week EMA. Now, here's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> this will be helpful for a lot of you. Uh, if you draw a, a parallel trend channel like that, uh, which is uh, pretty close, you know, these things tend to run pretty close. The point is um, that uh, I guess I'll draw it like that. I draw it from real bodies generally. Um, I'm not trying to get it exact, but the midline of the trend channel, also a good barometer or below the midpoint. We see that the midline of this trend channel has now been acting as resistance also. So we're not really in bullish uh, conditions here. Uh, I don't think this is ready to go. I think the the cycle low um, could be, you know, it could be this week, but it could be the next 10 days, um, a little bit longer. Those things aren't exact, but right now, it's just not giving us clear signals. So when in doubt, stay out. Uh, similarly on uh, Solana, yeah, I've been uh, been in cash uh, on both of these because I just think we do head lower um, and uh, the more more likely to head lower down in this range. But I've already put in my buy limit orders. And at this point, I'll turn on one of our custom indicators, the order block detector. Uh, there's various versions of this. Ours is better, I think. But but this has been hugely uh, impactful for trading. And so essentially, when we come down uh, into these buy blocks, these are buy orders on the books therefore supporting this price and last when we had that crash back in here you guys remember last that sunday august 4th i i had a feeling we would drop big on monday it wasn't really black monday but it was pretty ugly it came and dropped pretty heavily on high volume so on sunday i put in buy limit orders on solana let me open this up here because this was one of the best trades of the year i've made and I put in buy limit orders at 115. I should have done 110. I didn't think we'd go that 110, but I, I should have, you know, always put a buy limit on your on your best case scenario is a little below where you think you can get filled. I did get filled at 115, at 120, 125, and 130, and overnight, and then it bounced. So I woke up in profit and rode it all the way up here and started taking profits when we started to break below, you guessed it, the 21 and 50 day EMAs. And when they started to cross over each other, I got out. So I've just been out of this trade entirely. But right now, again, we're rejecting at that 21-day EMA. And more than likely, we come down, back down to retest this range. Hopefully, we do. Uh, I would love to see that because over time, we've seen this 125 level, 126, uh, you know, all the way up to about 128 held very strongly. Okay, so prior resistance, remember, resistance turns to support and vice versa over time. And so look at this. So back in, this was December of 2023, and right about the time uh, the uh, bull market was, uh, actually, that was a year later. Anyway, just the resistance here came up, broke as, as broke through, and now became support. 
and then sort of test it here once, twice, three times. You guys know in M3 Active Trader, I've shared my secret that usually breakouts and breakdowns happen on the third or fifth attempt. So when it held here on the third, I'm like, all right, this is this is strong. So we, again, we pushed up here and we held a fourth time. The fifth time held. So I was fairly certain that this sixth time it would hold. And I don't know that Solana ever goes back below 120 or 110 rather. Uh, a lot can happen in a bear market. But anyway, point being, um, I'm very bullish in this range. And so if we do come down, I'll show you right now why I think we do come back down on the IBIT. You guys know I've been following this. And uh, pretty sure I'm the only one who's been, been talking about the IBIT. And there's uh, the gap fill theory. So you guys on the CME gaps, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, um, the CME gaps tend to fill over time. Well, you know, why is that? It's a Wall Street product. Sometimes price moves in the other markets and futures markets on the weekend after the uh, markets close on Wall Street. Well, wouldn't you know it, now that the uh, the IBIT is an institutional product, um, I've been noticing since the inception here that all of these gaps here have filled. All of these gaps have filled, uh, and I haven't even circled all of them. There's more of them in here. They always come to backfill these gaps. Here's another one. And, you know, you can see those not to, I don't waste too much time on it, but just showing you all of these little gaps have filled. So what happened here is we had a pretty big gap here um, back around July 15th. So I speculated, and you guys remember that um, <clears throat> we were pushing up and I said, guys, there's this big gap to fill down here. I, you know, we're bullish for pushing higher. I don't see any reason why it should, but show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. We had some bad news. We had some war fears. We had lots of sell pressure up in this range. And sure enough, on that big uh, drop Monday, um, this gap here filled and created a new gap here on Monday, which then promptly went up and filled on itself. OK, so uh, now there's one remaining and I'm going to put it right in here. And the reason I think we head lower. Uh, these colors are meaningless, by the way. Uh, but this one here is the one I would pay attention to. Maybe I'll just make that one green because, as we say in Florida, that's the closest alligator to the boat and the one we want to pay attention to. And so right in here, uh, whether I want to code it green or not, it does act as a magnet. So it's another reason I do think we come down and fill that gap. And, uh, and incidentally, we just had a little gap here that already filled, you know, popped up and sold off. So this gap theory uh, on the, on the uh, four hour IBIT uh, uh, as of now I, is um, I, I'm the only one talking about it. If you like this uh, and you're watching on social, feel free to share this. And um, so everybody knows because, I mean, this is interesting. So that's why I think that the price is magnetized back down around to this 3150 level on the IBIT. You can see I have an alert already set as the buy zone. And uh, if that if the I bid, I've also been using it as a leading indicator for Bitcoin. So if that comes down, I mean, we could do it on a percentage basis. It doesn't mean that's going to be relevant at all. But let's just see if we were to do it from this current price and went and filled that gap. You know, we're around seven percent lower, um, and you know, we've already drifted down a little bit. So. Let's take a look at uh, Bitcoin. We'll get to our signals here in a moment. But if we were to go 7% lower, and I'm just, it's not really exact, but let's just see. So that would put us you know, right back into that buy block around 54K. So what should you do? <clears throat> well, um, I'm going to have an alert here. I already have an alert, $54,000 buy zone, because these order block detectors, part of our pro pack uh, indicators of indicators that are the best we've used and uh, created them to be so. You can see back here, the sell pressure was obvious back here on the, the uh, Bitcoin. So, um, you know, uh, to get access to these, if you don't have them already, just go to cryptomastery.org slash pro. And you can learn all about it. Watch this quick 30 minute video and you can learn more about these. Many of you have them. Certainly, if you're in our M3 Active Trader, uh, you have the uh, basic indicators at least because those are included. And uh, you can upgrade here if you'd like to the pro indicators, uh, if you like this a little bit more advanced. And uh, you can learn all about all these services at moonstream.io, our website, all of our services, including one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, mentoring. If you'd like help uh, with your portfolio and maximizing the bull run, uh, you can reach out to me. I have sp spots for about one, two, maybe two people. It takes a, little, a fair amount of my time and I've got a lot going on, but I want to make myself available if you need me. Interesting here on the DXY, by the way, Look at that DXY dropping nicely. Now, the thing is that the Dixie is weakening. The dollar's weakening seems to be uncoupling a little bit because typically when the DXY goes down, Bitcoin and crypto go up. Now we have both. 
going down, which is interesting. This is Bitcoin rally zone. I've had this chart up for months and we've been tracking this all the way back, uh, you know, since, um, you know, 2022 at least. So, uh, but so we can see how the zigzags on this have gone um, in a number of different iterations here and even head and shoulders. But the point is, where are we now? As the DXY drops, Bitcoin and crypto should be going higher, shouldn't it? So there's a lot going on in the international markets with the, the yen and uh, the yen carry trade and things I won't get into. But, um, you know, it's we don't want to see the dollar going up because then we're more likely to correct. Correct. So I, I we'll have to see what happens here. I have Bitcoin rally zone all the way down this zone. We could certainly keep dropping. You know, there's a line where it might find some support around 100, 100 uh, in one uh, in that range. So we'll want to watch that. But I have a question mark. But uh, as we head lower, the DXY, you know, when it was sub 100, it was back here in, uh, you know, February 2022. But really, in the uh, height of the bull market, the dollar DXY was down in that 90 to 95 range. Uh, so the two-year cycle low is all the way back here at 95. Three-year cycle low back here around uh, 90. So we do have some room to drop here. And on the macro side of things, we're just kind of range bound. But uh, we do want to watch the DXY. If we start, if we break below 100, then it's then that's that's what I call super Bitcoin rally zone. <laughs> so we uh, we really are waiting for this to happen. And uh, at one point I had that on there, and then we just sort of took it off. But super Bitcoin rally zone, it looks like this. All right, so now we have drawn our maps where we want to be. I'm just keeping an eye on that. And um, <clears throat> I see some comments here. Uh, EMA Ribbon Perry says, uh, okay, yeah, we can look at Ave uh, Perry. We can do that. I know that is one that's been on our radar. We talked about it in our Retire Rich class last week. Um, by the way, if you're not in Retire Rich, I've, I've just put together last night, I was working late on a 30-minute flash or highlight reel. Uh, of last week's class, which was excellent. And, um, you know, I highly encourage you to to watch that. And I don't know that we even have it up on a page yet, but um, I, I will, I'll I'll drop a link where you guys can find out more about that here in a moment. Let's see, where is this? Sis? Forgive me, I'm sharing the wrong screen, but uh, that's actually a video editor. Uh, if you go to um, retire rich, moonstream.io, I'll drop it in here. It's not for everybody, but we've got space for a few more. And uh, the retire rich is really looking for future Netflix and Amazons and those longer term holds with the highest potential. And Mike does a good uh, write up and review of Ave, by the way. Uh, and so uh, you can uh, links in there. That'll take you to a secondary page. And then there's a video you can watch. Um, the compilation video will get up. Uh, our team is some of our teams in the Philippines and having uh, volcanoes and all kinds of natural disasters over there. So. Um, but anyway, like I said, the show must go on. So um, let's see real quick, too. I also covered recently and updated in the M3 class, the potential path to 150K Bitcoin. And um, I won't go into it here, but uh, if you want to Google on uh, TradingView, I did a, a an update on this. And you can go and just uh, Google a Brett Fogel and a TradingView, and we can do that here just like this. And it'll, I do studies on there occasionally. I need to keep today's class kind of short, but you can go here and uh, Google that and um, GTS, Google that stuff here. And uh, right here, Bitcoin, Bitcoin update on the top 10 factors leading to 150K to 250K Bitcoin. So that is a video. I'm starting to do video updates there. So make sure to uh, kind of follow me there and on Twitter if you like. Uh, with some more timely updates, uh, we can only do these classes live so often. But uh, the, this is uh, these are starting to check off. We've been following these 10 factors for over a year now, and more of these are starting to turn green. When they all go green, you guys, I think this just explodes in this marketplace. Uh, uh, thank you, Perry, uh, for putting that link in there. And um, a little more detail on that. There's also videos on the DXY and the IBIT, so you can dig a little deeper. Uh, today's free class, this is Crypto Mastery. Um, you know, often we do get into the news, um, which um, I'll cover in a moment, but um, we're also going to talk about our indicators. It's primarily a training for that. And so before we get into the news here, um, just looking at our signals on Solana. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of signals here. We've got our TSI kind of rolling over. Uh, sometimes we'll talk about our trade success checklist. But in range bound markets, you know, our indicators are sort of, you know, like with any indicator, they don't really do much. So we have to rely on good old fashioned TA and uh, our order, our order block detectors, as well as 
uh, detector or singular, not plural, uh, as well as the uh, Bollinger Bands. And so here's what I want to talk about, you guys. Look at those Bollinger Bands. And again, um, you know, if you're not using our Bollinger Band Pro, the problem with regular Bollinger Bands is that they are they are not the settings are wrong for crypto. And I realized that back in 2021, because it just wasn't panning out, prices would go up way above the Bollinger Band, and it was kind of useless. I was uh, jerry-rigging it with percentage above and below, and then I made a change to the settings, and now it works perfectly for crypto, and we've coded that. So essentially, when it gets up and touches this upper red Bollinger Band, uh, and if it closes above, you'll get a red vertical line. But this is where I take profits and get out of the market. So that uh, ran up, touched it here, sold back down. And what's really interesting, my good friend Steve Nissen taught me this, that uh, when the Bollinger Bands, when it touches one extreme, often it'll go to the other extreme. So look at this, you guys. Look at that. Ran right up here. Perfect take profit zone. Bitcoin sold off all the way, touched the lower Bollinger Band to the tick and then what did it do it ran ran and ran out all the way to the top again you know in a in a, a trending bull market you know you don't get as many touches to the low side but it pushed up here hit a sell order block came down hit the lower bollinger band twice range bound and now it's pushing up to the higher so if nothing else if you just had the bollinger band pro and these buy sell order blocks you could do very well as a trader trading these back and forth patterns Okay, so what I was calling your attention to, though, and let me just take this off, is um, look at the Bollinger Bands tightening. That's another clue. Volatility is shrinking. Uh, typically, when these things tighten like this, like a Pac-Man, and they're like is biting down on, uh, this one looks more like Alien, but uh, when these pull down, volatility is decreasing. You can see, see volume going down. Typically, vol, when vol goes down, volatility, then there's a big pop. So I think we um, are preparing for a move, uh, a, a, I don't want to say significant move, but um, it's going to make a move here. These things don't go sideways forever. I think probably we drop down again to this one. This is on Solana, rather, on 126 level, and then we see a pop. And if we want to look at uh, Bitcoin, uh, let's see. I'll do this. I'll go here. And uh, kind of similar, but um, not as much, as much. But big thing with Bitcoin here is nothing bullish about this chart. It's been riding down the 21-day exponential moving average. It popped up this morning, even last night in M3 Active Trader. Those of you that are in that, let me see if we can pull that up. I'll show you. I said, guys, I don't, I don't trust this rally uh, because it pushed right up. Uh, it's a 60K and rejected. And uh, let me just show you right here. So this was, uh, if you want more timely advice, uh, make sure to find out about our M3 Active Trader group. So here is, it's a private signal group there. Uh, let's see, I have to hide some of the, the private chat. But here, I posted this. Um, technically, it was today. It was about 1 in the morning. I said, Bitcoin having trouble clearing the 50-day EMA, not convinced of this rally. That was 3 in the morning. Um, you know, I'm always online. Uh, I was not at my desk just doing a last-minute check. But uh, sure enough, then and I posted some other uh, chart patterns here of the uh, the bull market cycles. But here again, showing um, bearish news on Solana. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I said, <clears throat> expect further downside for Solana. When in doubt, stay out. That was this morning. And then, of course, Bitcoin losing, rejecting 60K. And I'm 100% cash and uh, in, or in stable coins, you know, um, in tethered and cash. So i um, waiting because I just, this is not bullish. I want to see this pullback here, maybe down on this range. Um, what is kind of new, though, we have a new, <clears throat> pardon me, a new buy block here that's appeared today in the 57k region so you know um i i think i think we are probably going to drift down for a few days uh we have uh jackson hole is this week uh, jerome powell is out there uh, for an economic summit uh you never know what's going to fall out of his mouth i i do not i no longer think we'll have a surprise rate cut so we need some kind of a catalyst um but i it generally what happens is september the big traders now that bitcoin is a wall street product and it is because of the ibit and blackrock you know the big big traders with the big money uh they they take the, the summer off you guys when sell in may and go away is mostly true of the stock market but um because now that bitcoin is derivatives based options futures I bet, you know, the big money is sitting around the pool in the Hampton sipping their pina coladas and not we're not worried about it. But as soon as September starts, which is right around the corner, they're back in the office. They're recharged and refreshed and ready to deploy capital. So what I am suggesting 
And it's pretty soon, I think we're going to start to see this market really heat up again. Uh, and of course, we cover that in a lot more uh, timely uh, detail on M3 Active Trader. So if you like these kind of classes, go check that out at moonstream.io slash M3. Our signals here not showing us a whole lot on the indicators. So we're just kind of, you know, when in doubt, stay out. And, um, you know, I can turn these all on, but, um, you know, they're not really seeing much. Uh, somebody mentioned a rocket on Ave, so I think Perry will look at that in a minute. But, uh, you know, when signals are inconclusive and we're going sideways, I'm just sort of, you know, it's a good time to go enjoy that last minute vacation and go to the beach. You know, I just I don't think much is happening here in uh, in the short term. And look at that volume just really die off. Usually the last two weeks in August, the volume dies off and everyone goes on vacation. So. That being said, uh, let's take a look at some news. Let me clean up the chart here a little bit. Nice thing is you can toggle these on and off. And by the way, um, you can certainly uh, set alerts on all of these. So again, one of my favorite sell signals is touching the upper Bollinger Band. So if we uh, go and say add an alert on our Bollinger Band Pro. So yeah, I got a little click copy there. Right click, uh, add an alert. And I want to say crossing up the uh, upper Bollinger Band. And so... That would be Bollinger Band right in here. Okay, so basically that's how you can set alerts on these. And then uh, then it will alert you. Imagine that. And that's uh, a great thing to do while markets are quiet. All right, uh, some other news here. Uh, crypto Potato. Um, you know, I'm always... Tr I won't say question the news source. Some are better than others. Uh, you, you know, realize that 80% of all media is placed. And at market tops, retail traders, you and me, we become liquidity and exit liquidity for the bigger traders. So they kind of push these narratives and articles. I call it the hype cycle. When we start seeing all these, all the news is super bullish. We're going to a million dollars, going to $5 million. Uh, it's time to sell because that's what's happening is all these retail, you know, Mary Homemaker and Bob down the street are on the phone saying, hey, I heard Bitcoin's going to a million. We should go buy some. And, um, and, and that's not what you should do because that's institutions and they're selling uh, at that point. Uh, so this headline, the big players are buying Bitcoin whales scoop up 94K in just six weeks. Y you know, over time, we are kind of seeing uh, some consolidation. I won't discount that uh, completely uh, because the, here's the here's the bigger picture. We've had a lot of selling, Bitcoin selling. Germany, a uh, town in Germany was dumping a lot. We had the Mt. Cox, Bitcoin was selling. The U.S. government was selling. And, but yeah, we didn't go down that much. So in the midst of that, there's been buying. I, I'm sure whales are accumulating uh, some, but not as much as in these, these accumulation cycles down, you know, the best time to buy Bitcoin, obviously back around 16.5. Uh, which, uh, if you remember, I had forecast that exact range, by the way, um, a little bit of luck, uh, a lot of spidey sense and experience. But uh, back in May, when we were, uh, it was actually a little earlier, but we were at 38K. It was the Bitcoin conference. And um, uh, you guys have heard the story a million times, but I was in a room full of whales, had a whale pass. And uh, uh, the editor of Bitcoin magazine was did a whole hour presentation on why Bitcoin would not go below 30,000. And um uh, and uh, and I suggested that it would. They nearly threw me out of the room, but guess what? I was right. And then publicly on May 19th, I forecasted 16.5. So that was a great time to be buying uh, toward the end of 2022. And that's when we launched M3 Active Trader. And I said, it's time to get back in. Blood on the streets. Buy when there's blood on the streets, even when it's your own. And that turned out to be a, a pretty good time to buy. Um, so and, and, and through here, accumulation. So you know, we are uh, in a, a, a precarious, tricky spot here because, you know, we just don't know if these uh, market cycles, the four-year cycle will continue forever. And, um, you know, um, but this is a pretty predictable pattern. We are going to go higher. Uh, and then, uh, so I do believe there's some accumulation going on and we just have to break out. Uh, and, and I think the big money is going to flow in. Like for me, when we break and close above 72K, and then 74K, that is my buy zone. Um, I like to buy into strength. I don't like to catch a falling knife. You know, I'll buy into support or buy into strength. And let's see, I'm trying not, not let me draw this box here. So now this, these green boxes below are buy limit or buy orders. And um, so if we drop down to 57K, 54K, I'd be buying Bitcoin, kind of waiting for indicators to turn up, but also over in closing above these, prior highs because that means that bull flag is broken and we're on our way to 100k uh so that's good so um we'll keep you posted there and if, again for more timely alerts you can join m3 active trader 
and that's right here. Click on that. You can learn more about that. You also get our, our indicators included, not the pro one, not the pro ones, but you get the, the good ones that we started everybody out with. And uh, you can read more about that here. Many of you are already in them through Active Trader. I can see uh, many of you are here. And let's see. Hey, Sam. Hey, Rick. Uh, Perry, Paul, Dr. T. Okay, awesome. And uh, Alex, of course. So um, you guys are already familiar. Um, not much else I want to cover here. We'll look at Ave, and then I got to run. And uh, let me just see here. I'm getting some messages here. Uh, only AC power off. Okay, so we're good to go. Um, uh, we can we can do some news. I do want to dive into some Solana news because it's not entirely positive here today. <clears throat> I want to see the bad news kind of filter out. Uh, we had, um, let's see, yeah, the SEC rejected the CBOE's 19B4 filings for the Solana ETF, and there were um, other some other news that I shared in the M3 group here. Let me see if I can open that up and refresh my uh, aging memory here. Uh, let's see. That's the first thing to go, they say. Actually, my memory's pretty good. Uh, let's see. The SEC, as Solana continues sideways as outflows rec record $39 million. Um, yeah, this is the one I was concerned about. Solana's former top decentralized uh, crypto exchange, uh, which one was that? FTX? I think that's FTX. Uh, SEC securities violation. Um, yeah, anything SEC uh, and securities, SEC talks, uh, ETF issues, concerns over Solana being a security preceding the CBOE removing the 19B. Uh, it's just, it's more FUD, you guys. It's just uh, in the short term, uh, uncertainty uh, equals risk. People de-risk in in certain times, and so and then also the faded hype around the Solana meme coins. You know the <laughs> I don't the, the I'm stumbling a bit because that whole I don't know if I want to go down the rabbit hole. We all know the altcoin market, the altcoin rally died because all the money was flowing into meme coins. People thinking that was easy money. Don't have to learn about the token. All I have to do is buy one of the dozens or hundreds of Solana meme coins that were coming out every day, but they were uh, just rug pulls, 99% of them. And, uh, and so understandably that's run its course and kind of uh, imploded. But but what it was great for was for Solana's transactions. And even though the gas fees were low, it was contributing significantly to the revenue to the Solana blockchain. So now that that thing, uh, that fad is sort of over, Solana's seeing an outflow of um, revenue and uh, people selling the coin. So anyway, I think, uh, you know, I still love Solana. Don't get me wrong. I just want to buy it lower. And um, you know, buy low, sell high. Imagine that great concept. Um, but that's what we're that's what we're doing um, by balancing news and fear and greed, and uh, and then these buy blocks. So again, for Solana, you know, it's possible. I, I'm I'm impartial and unemotional to the outcome. But now is the time to be watching carefully because on the one hand, here we go with the, on the one hand, on the other hand, so we're putting in a higher low potentially after being range bound. So this is a good thing. Higher lows, always good to see that happening. And if we start to break up from here, then I would say that's great. But uh, still, we have this uh, heavy sell pressure around 200. And, um, you know, but for traders, this is great. We can buy in the green zone, sell in the red zone. And right now I'd like to see it come back down and uh, get my orders filled. I have orders at 125 and 130 and in, and deeper into the green. I'd love a big scare sell off, boom, get get filled overnight and then come back up in here. Um, because guys, I've turned 50 Sol into 90 Sol since May by trading it in in one of my ira accounts and uh on the next buy if i buy back it'll be 100 sol so um you know i'm i'm building long-term positions by trading the ups and downs so i don't mind these range bounds and uh and in terms of our indicators even though we aren't seeing clear signals now they've been great for uh trading these uh back here the eri went red tsi went red rsi went red i was selling my solana back down here green eri bullish Green RSI bullish, another sign to get in. So right now we have uh, nothing really conclusive, but uh, that's when uh, the, the indicators that we have are so powerful. And I highly recommend those that you have those if you don't already. All right, let's take a look at Ave because somebody mentioned that. Um, and, you know, in tomorrow's class, we look at more coins and in our basket of M3 coins. So join us for that in M3. 
Uh, let's see. Ave. Uh, I don't see the sell order blocks up top. The one thing I would recommend is always check different exchanges. So let's look at it on Binance. So, um, but this is pretty good. You know, we don't have any sell pressure up till around 200. Um, but let's see. I always say, okay, I like this and try to invalidate it. So I like this, but, um, and I do want to look at a weekly here before I take that off. And let's just see. So here's the thing with the weekly looks great, you guys, on Ave, the uh, nice cup and handle forming. It's a little bit janky, but uh, we have the handle here. I would like to see it kind of break up above this range, so above 132. But Ave is great in the DeFi space. They're doing without, you know, they're, they're doing what BlockFi and a lot of the others tried to do before they famously imploded. Uh, and I do think Aave is going to be one of the leaders in the DeFi space. So, um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, accumulating this, great. You know, this was an accumulation zone, just coming out of an accumulation zone. Probably good for at least a run up to 500, which is, as I already had on drawn on here, uh, we've been following Aave. You know, this is a potential 5X if you were to buy, uh, buy this. Um, I would add to the position over 140. And I would take some profits around here on 235. This is, you know, these things don't go straight up. And as uh, active traders, you know, we kind of, we, we were prepared for this <laughs> kind of a, of a movement. But uh, yeah, I like Aave. Um, you, you know, let's go back to a daily and just see. It's getting a little bit overbought here, but that's okay. It can stay up here for a while. Uh, I don't uh, have much else to say about Aave other than it's range bound which isn't a bad thing, you know. Uh, we call it ga ga gas in the tank. The longer these things these things go sideways, sideways, the more momentum they have to really push higher. I'm going to leave that diagram on there. Uh, something about these squiggly lines have been somewhat prophetic over the years. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, I, I you know, either buy on a pullback or a breakout above 130, 140 would be my read on that. All right, so what is radar show? Yeah, thank you for reminding me uh, who said that on. I forgot about our radar indicator. Holy cow, you guys. Holy cow, we haven't seen an all green radar in a while. This is our multi time frame radar, and it's uh, based on the, uh, um, the same indicators usually that the programmatic buying and selling use on the exchanges and the hedge funds that because uh, our programmer partner genius knows these things and uh so uh, Abe all green uh that's good let's take a look at bitcoin that was the question uh all red mostly red on bitcoin um so again um i would not be buying bitcoin i would um you know we, I, we talk about strategy more in m3 active trader but having some powder dry to buy the pullbacks makes more sense let's take a look at solana and even eth uh, uh solana all red on the radar okay so this actually this indicator we created back after the december 2021 bull run peak and uh, when we were telling people to get out of the markets but in early december we were launched relaunching moonstream our pick for that month, I, I believe, was ruined. It was it was ruined, and it was up 157 percent. And we were pounding the table, guys. You got to get in. This pick is up, and then boom, the whole market tanked, and we had people a little upset. But obviously, we can't control when the market turns. But I went to Joe. And I said, Joe, can we need a multi time frame kind of signal that tells people because we can't always tell people get out of the market. We, they need to be able to say, uh, I'm getting out. So when the radar is all red and you can change this for different time frames, the default, I think, is four hour uh, daily, weekly, monthly. On mine, I like a little bit longer, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. But uh, Solana, all red on the radar. So, um, you know, I think we do have we've got lower. I think we dip back down in this range and I'm, I'm very happy about that because I've got powder dry and I'll be buying in this range and waiting for that radar to come back to green. Um, guys, you can't find these tools anywhere else, by the way. And um, so these are tools are invaluable. If you don't have them, go to cryptomastery.org slash pro and make sure you watch that video and get your hands on these because you are at a disadvantage. If you're using uh, RSIs and MACDs and all of the things that most traders use, you are behind the curve. You don't have an edge. And our signals are forward-looking. And um, and one of them, the early reversal indicator, is, is just that. It's an early 
signal that picks up on programmatic buying when these inflection points are about to happen. And so if you don't have those, you're trading against people like uh, us uh, that have them. And uh, it's a zero sum game, you guys. And so invest in your tools. And, uh, you know, if you're going to just go deep and geek out on all these triangle, three dry, Elliott, wait, I'll just forget all that nonsense. Uh, everyone uses that stuff. Uh, and it's like if you if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail and you'll try to see patterns that aren't there. Um, TA is very subjective. So be careful with that. OK, um, total market cap still, um, you know, trying to hold two trillion. But look at this bearish candle here. Also rejecting at the daily 21 day exponential moving average. Look at this, you guys you see this swiggly line here. I've had to draw on there for a week. And it didn't push up as high as I thought, but it did pull back and bounce a bit. Do we continue pushing up higher here? I, I just don't know. Lots of sell pressure up in this range. And uh, this is going to be tough, you guys, because remember, $3 trillion total market cap was the market cycle high last cycle back here in 2021 at the peak. So, you know, people are going to try to front run that. That's what all of this sell pressure is. So this, this is a lot of sell pressure on the total market cap. And that, of course, includes Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything. If we look at uh, a sea of total two, that's minus Bitcoin. Still a lot of sell pressure up at those prior peaks and even total three. So, um, you know, th this is going to take a while to really start hitting uh, new highs. And it may be toward November or December. We just don't know. Uh, we'll talk about that more in tomorrow's class. We'll look at Bitcoin dominance and USDT dominance uh, in the M3 class tomorrow. Uh, you know, just skimming through here, a couple of dead cat bounces on some coins. You know, we have our own basket of coins in the M3 Active Trader, so we'll look at that tomorrow. I think what I want to do is look for any news that's relevant. Uh, let's see, uh, Paul saying indicators are great. Thank you, Paul. Um, and novice uh, in dabbling and buying. The indicators are critical for me to decide when I want to buy or which I want to buy. Yeah, no, they really are, and, and we don't oversell them, but thank you for pointing that out. Uh, Paul says, I have not sold coins yet, waiting to get some bags to baseline level before attempting selling to buy back, being a trader. You, you know, I mean, there's multiple levels of trading without becoming a day trader, but uh, I've traded myself out of some pretty uh, gnarly situations where I was down in the red and uh, took partial losses to play the swing tops and bottles, bottoms to get back to even. And, and these indicators were invaluable with that. Uh, they also work on the, all time frames. They're fractal. So one minute, three minute, five minute, 15 minute, all of them. The ERI and the TSI are great for day trading, uh, which we don't teach yet. Uh, I dabbled. I did have a sniper trader course back in 2021, 2022, but uh, tricky business and and not easy to find margin trading platforms in the US. But I, I think I have found uh, <clears throat> something we can use. Anyway, uh, yeah, just building a foundation. Great, Paul. Uh, let's see. Perry said, oh, you want me to look at the rocket on uh, Ave? Sure, we can do that. So let's uh, go back to uh, Ave there. And where did that thing go? I'll just look at it on Coinbase since most of you are US-based. And then our rocket indicator, which we're so happy to have. Let's see. Is uh, Yeah, the rocket's turned on. On Ave, I don't see a rocket here. Uh, did you see one? Let me take a look at the weekly. No, I mean the the, the rocket you guys specifically is, and um, it, and it works better on some coins than others. But let's go back here. The rocket, this is a textbook rocket here, where the real body is sitting on the launch pad. Looks like a bottle rocket. Okay, there's. Um, and uh, typically you see the real body sitting right at a 21 or 50 day EMA with a wick below it. That's the fuse. And you light the fuse and it shoots up in the sky and then usually falls back to earth. It's a quick move. Uh, back here, we've got a bunch of rockets on Ave. They don't always pan out, but this this one here, I don't know, our indicator isn't fine-tuned as much as I'd like to see it because uh, I'd like to see the real body sitting just on the EMA. And this is something, I can't say I invented it. I'm the only one that I've heard talk about this pattern, but essentially 
uh, launch, sitting on the launch pad, fused down below. This one wasn't as good, so it shot up a little bit. You want to use your Bollinger Bands for take profits on those. So when they get above the Bollinger Bands, look at this, you guys. Upper Bollinger Band. When you get above the upper Bollinger Band with ours, our settings are different than normal. That's a sell point because invariably, especially with crypto, if they get above, they always pull back. Uh, I would say almost, I would say, I'll say always. The rare exception is on a rip-roaring bull push higher, it can ride the upper Bollinger Band. When it gets that far above it, and we're not in a rip-roaring uptrend, it look at that, pulled back to medium baseline. All right, so and then we had another rocket here, shot up in the sky, fell back to Earth. And this rocket, if you don't see a wick, a deeper wick, I don't take those like this. This needs to be the code needs to be tweaked a bit. And, the um, you know, so the problem with this rocket is it really needs to close at the top of the pricing. So this one uh, and this one are almost rockets, but uh, they're not as textbook as what we like to see closing at or near the top of the day. So in terms of rockets here, let me just see if I see what you think might be a rocket. But uh, none of these are. None of these are. If this one, this one's sitting on the 50 day, but see how it sold off from the top? That means the reason it's important when it closes near the top, it means it's selling pressure, sorry, buying pressure is strong. Buyers are in control and that carries through to the day, rest of the day and next day. When it sells off toward the end of the day, that means that profit takers are in. It's not that strong of a move. Now it did still push up, but this was not a textbook rocket. Let me see. Uh, you have a rocket one week ago on Ave USDT, and you know we can look at the see if that's different. Ave uh, USDT. All right, let's take a look. Sometimes these pa uh, pairs are different. Which exchange are you looking at? I'll um, I'll use MEX uh, MEXC. Okay, well that's interesting. Yeah. All right. So. So, and this is where things are nuanced. This one closed closer to the top of the day. And I have, I have a photographic memory. So I remember the last one, we had more of a sell wick on top. Uh, there will be variations on exchanges. So if you, if you do see a rocket um, and, or any other indicator, and it's, it's a big important position for you, check it on other exchanges that have more liquidity. So on MEXC, we did have a rocket there. It was close enough that the, the exact formulation is, as I coded it, is it closes at or within 10% of the high of the day. See that? And that that's close enough. We got the rocket. Okay. So um, anyway, that's uh, thanks for pointing that out. And yes, I see Perry's rocket. Uh, which Which exchange? And let's check a different one. I mean, when in doubt, just always look at different ones. We could look at it on KuCoin. It's it's there on KuCoin. And it looks like it's the, it's the tether pair for some reason. And uh, that's an interesting anomaly. Normally, we don't see that. It's subtle enough. That's why I'll second. That's why I usually wait for a rocket that sells at or near the top of the uh, the high of the day because I'll even go over to Binance and, um, you know, so Binance isn't showing it. This one looks close enough on Coinbase. I remember it had a bit more of a, a sell, a topping tail on it. We're getting down the rabbit hole here, but you see this. Uh, and, and certainly the lower wick needs to be larger than the upper wick. That's part of the coding also. And this has a tiny wick on the downside, a uh, bigger wick on the upside. Regardless, though, regardless, here's the thing, you guys. So what? I love a big green candle on top of the 21 and 50 day EMA. In fact, I, it'd be a good time to segue over into our trade success checklist, which you can download for free at our website, moonstream.io, and just go down and download this trader success checklist. Just give it your name and email. Uh, we'll also give you some other free resources. And uh, we use this to take trades and give them a trade uh, score. So basically, I'm gonna go pull it up directly. And let's see, I have it as there, okay? And I'll, I'm gonna download it for us and we'll just go through this because one of the things, this works with our indicators and without, it has uh, use for both. And what I'm doing is I'm just downloading this, which is uh, what you would wanna do as well. And I'll just drop that right up in here. Uh, where did that go? And then open the PDF. 
So here we go. And that way you've got the interactive version. So what we use this for is for beginners trading and using our indicators or not. Uh, ours are, um, as Paul mentioned, they're great. Uh, give us an edge. If you want to start out just playing around with this, one of the um, signals is, is there a bullish engulfing candle? Is the candle body at support? EMA trend line is the price above the 21 and 50 period EMA. So this class is, uh, is great. It's very congruent. Um, well, this here, remember the ice analogy. Okay. Uh, we fell below the ice, kind of drowning for a while, got back up above the ice. We stood up on the ice and we jumped for joy. I don't know. <laughs> My analogies get stranger and stranger, but I, I, I use them as visuals so you get it. We got back above the 50-day EMA, back above the thick ice. And from there, you're safe. You know, this big green candle um, is a bullish signal. And uh, we also had, incidentally, our trend strength indicator go green. And I bet you the ERI, the early reversal. Okay, so this was a textbook trade, actually. And um, so this one here, the ERI... The early reversal indicator, that's that accidental discovery that uh, we made and that I made, um, and, and it turned out to be a, a great one once we coded it. So basically, in this trade success checklist, let's use Avi as an example. So is the ERI showing a green up arrow? Now, some of you who haven't seen this before, who have uh, traded for a lot longer, you're like, that's cute, green arrow, got it. Um, no, I, I, there's a real oscillator with the Keltner channel inside of it. The true indicator has a very specific pattern within a very specific time frame, and uh, some very specific other uh, mathematical um, formulas. But uh, it's not fun to look at. So I had Joe turn, to put arrows on there. Joe, our 25 year quant engineer, professional trader, all around good guy and uh, closet mad scientist genius. And you guys who know Joe, uh, he's awesome. Um, and, and and we'll trade circles around any one of us. I promise you. He, every time I talk to him, he has advanced algos trading the S&P. Uh, he's automated and, um, and even put audio to. I hear bears growling in the background. I said, Joe, what just happened? He said, uh, my signals just went bearish. So, uh, you know. Success leaves clues, you guys. Uh, we're lucky to have. So anyway, Joe, of uh, ERI, is it showing an up green arrow? What I'm going to do is so I can toggle back and forth. Let's do this. Stay with me. This is important stuff. So we have, is the ERI showing green up arrow? Is there one? Yes, there is. Oh, is that enough to take the trade? Nope. Um, that only gives us a one on the trade success checklist. Typically, I want to see the ERI and the TSI, which is the next one, the trend strength indicator. Many of you guys already know this, but it never it's repetition is the mother of all learning. So uh, basically what you want to look for there, the TSI is that green and above the 20 line standard oscillator rules above 20 bullish below 80 bearish. Do we have a TSI going green? Yes, we do right there. So we have confirmation, confluence, very important in trading. So we've got check mark number two. And you can see on this, it gives it a success, a trading success score. Now I've got four because I had the uh, check the other two. Let's, let's keep going. Let me uncheck those. We'll go through this because it helps to see this. Guys, use this. I created this for you guys to take the emotion out of trading. Uh, and if you don't, if you have a zero out of 21, don't take the trade. If you have a two out of 21 or greater, it's worth considering. A one, not enough. So ERI only, not enough. Green arrow only, not enough. But when we see ERI TSI, then I'm paying attention. I'll often start getting into a trade then, building a position. Uh, amateurs go all in and all out. Uh, professionals and smart, successful traders, they'll build positions and pair out of them. And there's a big lesson there. Uh, so confluence is important. I'll hide these other ones till we get to them. What else do we have here? Uh, I'll go back to the checklist. I'll get to the trend indicator in a minute. Um, I don't have that loaded right now, but let's look at the signal line. These are all different algos. And so again, back to confluence. So we have the signal line turn red to green, and that is this signal there, red to green. So that gives us another check mark. So now we have three out of 21. Uh, is the trend indicator showing a bell? I, I know that it is. Here's extra credit for you guys. How do I know the trend indicator is showing a bell right here? 
See that vertical green line in the pro indicators, we've coded it. So both the TSI and the signal now show vertical green lines. So we don't even have to have the trend indicator loaded. But looky there, if we open it up, we can see that the bell is showing. Uh, the bell is our buy signal, and this is for longer term trends. So there you go. Key, The key says, hey, it might be a trend change forming. The bell is the confirmation saying buy. So looky there, we have a bell. So bingo, check on that. Does the trend indicator have a green midline? Normally it will when we get a bell, but not always. See this midline there. And uh, so uh, when it's red, all that means is there's no trend. It doesn't mean go short. When it starts turning green, because we can see this kind of movement here uh, where it's kind of like Mario Brothers is going to come running out, grabbing all the coins, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. We have that bag of money symbol saying, time to take profits, wait for a new bell. And that way you're always taking profits as you go. And look at this, came right up to the bag of money. And uh, after two or three cycles, though, I usually don't take a new bell because these things you know, ultimately revert to the mean. But, um, uh, but this is another symbol of confluence. Okay, so there we go. We had a bell. <clears throat> We're doing pretty well there on the green line. So our trade success score is 5 out of 21 now. Uh, our, what, else, what else do we have? Is there a bullish engulfing candle pattern? Well, I don't know. Did we miss that? These are We did have bullish engulfing candle right back here before the ERI. Do you see how if you're paying attention, the clues are there? And that's really what we want to do is be like Sherlock Holmes with this and uh, and look for these clues because when you see the clues start adding up, that's when these trades really like look good. All right, so look at that. Um, and, and you know, if you're not looking for them, you may not see them. All right, so we have uh, so we have the bullish engulfing candle. So now we've got a really good score, six out of 21 on Ave, if we had been watching that. And it sounds like, Perry, you might have been uh, in this trade. Uh, let me just scroll down here. And uh, um, yeah, RSI Pro, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll look at that in a minute, Sam. Um, is the candle body at support? Remember, we talked about that first. Candle body at support. So we have that a little bit later here. See, there's a bit of a delay on the recording. Uh, let's see. You know what? That's giving us a little bit clumsy. Uh, let me do this here. I'm going to move it right over there. It's going to be better for the recording. So um, essentially, candle body at support. So we had that symbol there. So we checked that off. Is the price above the 21 and 50 period exponential moving average? If you're just joining the class, we covered that at the beginning. Uh, and uh, we got above the 21 to 50. So right in this range here, we had all of these signals lining up to catch this move. And uh, this is why uh, these indicators are so good. Unfortunately, there's no one single indicator, although we, I've been saying this for a while, it's not easy, but we're trying to make it so that we have one master indicator that factors these things in, but uh, it would be less uh, often and, um, uh, we'll figure that out. Um, but anyway, is the price above a rising support trend line? Um, so rising support trend line. We do have a trend line. It's kind of rising here. We had, uh, you know, sometimes it, sometimes this checklist helps you look for things you should have been looking for already. This was a double bottom, but now we sort of have a upward trending trend line. So all these things are sort of pointing toward a very bullish um, score, score. We're at 9 out of 21. Is price breaking, breaking above trend line resistance and you know that's a little questionable i don't want to like look for things that aren't there but uh in some ways uh no i mean in, in all fairness a, a trend line resistance would be an overhead downward trend line so we don't need all of these to line up but is there a rocket that's the one we were just talking about rocket on the launch pad and there was a rocket is a green candle with a real body resting at support a wick below and that closes at or near the top of the day it has to be within 10%. This is a textbook rocket sitting on the 21 day EMA closed at or near the top. There's a little tiny wick on the top, but mostly closed near the top and a wick below. So light that fuse shoots up in the sky. The, the launch pad can be a 21 or 50 period EMA. That's how I've programmed it. It can be a trend line. You'd have to, you'd have to eyeball that. Uh, we can't currently uh, program trend lines um, or other support level that has held price action. That's kind of a little bit more nuanced. And then we call again, we call it the rocket on the launch pad because it usually blasts higher 
from support. I invented this and you won't find it anywhere else, but you can now once you see it, you can't unsee it. Uh, the other thing we've added in our, our early reversal indicator pro are these buy blocks. Um, we don't see these. I don't think I have, uh, we don't see any buy blocks. This is money flow. So we want to walk to watch out for that as well. And guys, I got to wrap up class here, but uh, these buy blocks increase, increase demand and represent where money flow is coming in. So here we have uh, another check. We didn't have that one, actually. So our score of still 10 out of 21, we have bearish signals also. Well, here's one, though. We have all green. We had all green on the radar. It looks like that flipped over. Uh, the three month here um, flipped over. But if we had if we had all green on the radar, that would have been another check mark. Uh, real quick, too, there's the average true range we haven't looked, talked about. That's another one of our signals. You can also use that as a trailing stop and hold hold my beer for hold my beer. As they say, look, we just went to entry mode on the average true range. And that is often a very bullish signal that directions changing, you know, except when we're range bound. I know there's a lot going on in this chart here. I'll, I'll often use the average true range on four hour charts, et cetera. But hey, it's better to be in entry mode than an exit zone. I think uh, Abi is, uh, is positioned well to uh, push higher. Let's look at it on a weekly. And I'll turn off the ATR because it, it does change the color of the uh, candles. So, you know, we did hit the upper Bollinger Band on, on uh, Aave. That's the thing. Um, I would be looking to buy any pullbacks on Aave. And see, these Bollinger Bands are tightening. It's riding the 21 and 50 EMA. Great example. I, I think what I would really want to see here is to break above the 135, which is that recent uh, local high. And then it should be off to the races, you know. And um, But again, uh, with the overall frame... Around the market here, I think we're a little bit weak and um, need some pullback. But but soon, soon I think we really start seeing that some of these alts take off. And uh, so that was a great example. All right, guys, uh, what are we looking at here? Um, you have posted something about engulfing candles. You know, we have our own candlestick uh, that'll, that'll show engulfing candles and uh, other things, which I don't use just because I've eyeballed it. But look at that big bullish engulfing candle on the weekly. Look at that. Uh, and another one back in here. So we have multiple bullish engulfing on the weekly on Ave. So I think it's definitely one to watch. Okay, guys, doesn't sound like we have time for news here today. Um, Ave token reaches 120. Uh, as number of weekly buyers hits all time high, that's worth noting. You know, when you see networking, uh, network effect going higher, uh, number of wallets hitting all time highs on these coins, that shows mass adoptions. So this is likely driving the price push. This is from five days ago. Ave token retakes 110 as number of weekly borrows hits all time high. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's a good one to point out. Thanks for pointing that out, Perry. Uh, if we did want to look at some Bitcoin news, let's see. Uh, controversy, whatever. I don't want to get too far. That's still on uh, Avi for some reason. Bitcoin news. Let's see what's going on. Any uh, pressing news? And whale accumulates 118 million in Bitcoin. How will Bitcoin price respond? You know, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Uh, you, you were just not. We're seeing. Here's here's what I see here. Big drop in volume. Uh, okay, so we don't want to make any buying decisions. Again, Jackson Hole's this week. They're waiting for Powell, what he might say, what he might not say. And so, therefore, when in doubt, uh, stay out. Uh, let's see. We could jump over into Crypto Panic and oops, not that. Well, here, CryptoMastery.org uh, slash pro for their pro tools. Let's see. Uh, I don't see a lot in the news department here. So, um, guys, um, I'm going to skip the news this week. Not a lot going on, and uh, there you go. Let's see. Real last minute request. Paul says, "If can you review HNT? All right, we'll do Helium real quick. Uh, Helium has been on a tear, and uh, so let's take a look at that. I was actually pointing that out in M3 Active Trader last week, and we've been following that. And just so you know, I ain't lying. Uh, if you guys want more active trades, I'm putting trade alerts out all the time. Uh, at the right times, uh, yeah, here, and Alex confirmed, so I posted Helium, and Alex, uh, a lot of smart traders in the M3 Trader Group, by the way, like Alex, uh, like Diogenes here, really smart banter, and uh, KS, a number of great traders in, in here, a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, great community. I recommend checking out M3 Active Trader. And uh, I've been talking about helium for a while here. 
So uh, I know I posted about it a week before before it moved. Is that it? Uh, that's Blur Metaverse here. Anyway, a lot of chatter in that. Lots of daily uh, uh, information. Anyway, so let's go back to Helium. And then I got to run, you guys. But for now, let's see. H&T, we'll do it on Coinbase. Um, you know, um, I, I was saying, by the way, you guys recall an M3 trader, we were watching this whole thing sell off all the way through here. And I kept saying, you know, at some point the sellers will become exhausted and, and helium will run again. Uh, it just got overbought. It got way overbought on the hype from the mobile token and a lot of profit taking. But here's a good example of those ERI Pro money flow box blocks here on the weekly time frame. Uh, sellers exhausted buyers came in heavy got back above the 21 and 50 week ema strong buyer support now i have not yet seen and i have not disproven this yet i have not seen any chart on any token where we have gone below a recent buy block on the money flow using our eri pro so uh, and and there's some very significant levels where it fired on bitcoin so basically uh helium does look strong here let's go over to a weekly time frame well, it's a little bit overbought uh, the radar looks terrible though uh on this daily time frame so uh, not to pour cold water on things for me that's a no uh back in here radar was green so we had eri green let me open this up let's just let's do this we haven't done this in a while i'm going to go and do a uh We'll do a test. We'll do a bars pattern. Okay. Uh, no, that's not what I want to do. Uh, what is it called? It's replay. It's some of these, there's so many tools in this platform. And uh, I forget sometimes where is bar replay. Okay. So we're going to do this. All right. We're going to do this together. So let's go backwards in time. All right. Let's do a, a, a test. So we come all the way back here and to August 1st. Would you buy here? Well, I don't know. We've got bullish engulfing candle and that's a, and bouncing off the 21 day EMA. A lot of sell pressure up ahead. That's a tough one. I, I probably wouldn't buy there. Let's go forward a day. And now good thing we didn't because we had a bearish engulfing candle there. I uh, wouldn't be buying there. We're going lower. We're going lower into a buy zone. So we're interesting, but nothing yet. We have a little bit of a interesting pattern. There we have the ERI. Do we buy at the ERI on the first example? No, I, I would wait. I want to see at least a confirmation on the TSI. And so let me uh, do one more. Okay, TSI is now green above 20. Look at that. So now we've got two out of 21 on the trade success checklist. So I'm going to hit the buy button there. We'll buy one of, uh, buy some helium. <clears throat> it's just for example purposes. And then we go there. Look at that. Nailed that up into a sell range. So, I mean, and we got above the Bollinger Band. So my rules are I'd sell. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, maybe sold a little prematurely. It happens. And I was tempted to buy two when the ERI TSI lined up. So we left some money on the table there. Let's see what happens next. Uh, getting uh, in a sell block there. We are getting a key, a bell, a bell signal. So a little bit, you know, um, uh, mixed signals here. That's a tough one. It probably does go higher, but I wouldn't buy. No, it pulls back from that sell block. Okay. So, um, you know, and now we're just kind of waiting. We're pushing higher here. Do we have more signals to say higher? Uh, we don't really. You know, had we stayed in the trade, it'd be great. Now the buy block appears. So, um, you know, this thing is going to wiggle around a bit. Bearish ERI, so we would be wanting to sell there. And um, and then we just kind of, so, you know, we had one trade. We had 100% win rate still on that using just those signals. And, and anyway, uh, the point being lots of buy support underneath where we are now. Would I buy it here? I would not. But uh, on a weekly time frame, let's see what we see. And uh, what do I see? I see a key and a bell, but I don't see enough that I would be buying yet. I would buy pullbacks into the $5.75 range above the 21 and 50 EMA and wait for the other signals. So helium is I'm neutral. I, you know, ideally would have sold here. I think it probably pulls back down around six bucks, but, uh, but we'll see.
Okay, uh, Perry, mostly liquidated cash tables. Yes, I'm. I am uh, entirely 100% in cash and stables right now. Um, and and I'm you know except for what I have on a you know hard cold storage hidden somewhere. Those are long term. My goal with trading is to uh, earn profits, trading swings, and then buy you know add to the long term storage. But you know really uh, I I want to trade this market and the bull market and uh, and stack 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 stats and profits and that's the name of the game. Long-term buy and hold, I mean, over years and years makes a lot of sense, but I don't want to ride another bear market down, and I think most people don't. It's um, So, you know, buy and hold, uh, I've never been a big um, fan of, although my best trade ever is forgetting I had some Ethereum from 2018 and uh, discovering it went up a lot <laughs> because I'd forgotten I had it. So uh, anyway, that's how I'm playing it. Um, you know, I like to buy into strength. Look at this, all red on the radar. This thing, the weekly keeps toggling. So uh, this weekly close will be important on uh, on Helium. But uh, anyway, guys, thanks very much. Uh, we wound up going over an hour. So uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you guys again uh, next. Actually, next week, I am, uh, may have to, I, next week I'm out of town. So I may try to, do, I'll be in Dallas. And so I'll try to do the class uh, I like to do it from the war station here where I've got monitors all around, but, uh, you know, happy to do these on the road and it is still summertime. Um, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, markets, I still think they're going to be kind of quiet until we get into September, but, uh, and, and we have our new market cycles secrets course. Uh, and uh, the instructor, Juan Villaverdes, he's proposing market cycle low around the 20th to the 30th. So we are at the 20th. Specifically, he thinks the 24th. So uh, we'll see. For, could we get a big bounce in four days? I would like to be – what I would love is a big sell-off in the next two days, three days, and pull back down to 54K Bitcoin or lower and – um yeah, I mean, see people are buying, whales buying, but I, I mostly, I'm going to load up on Sol and uh, and some Bitcoin if we get in the ranges. If we don't, I'm just going to sit tight. Uh, you know, ETH, we didn't look at, uh, where's ETH on my, here it is. Let's just take, ETH hasn't been looking too good. This is a chart I did with a private client the other day. I'll just share it real quick. I won't go into all the detail, but uh, this is my my chart on ETH here. We were looking at some scenarios uh, and some Fibonacci targets. But basically, just to zoom in here on ETH, um, I, I think ETH certainly does go lower. A bearish engulfing candle today. Uh, it could bounce a little, probably bounce down. These are DCA levels, so that's where I'd be buying ETH around 2400 uh, around 20, 2350 You know, if it comes down to twenty. 100 certainly at two at 2000 i'd be backing up the proverbial truck and buying eth at 2000 that's a strong psychological level and then from all these levels here you know these are the likely paths you know pushing up reject pullbacks you know these these levels here prior resistance will but but ultimately we go higher on this market you know uh, i would certainly be uh, taking profits around this uh, 3600 level and all the way up uh, up on the 4,800 level, front running the 5K ETH. And so, you know, but uh, it just, the chart, a lot of this is unwinding the ETH uh, ETF trade. Uh, it was a sell the news event, as we saw. I think ETH has lower to go, but this would be great zone to be accumulating some Ethereum. And uh, I'll be watching for that, uh, as well as some of the altcoins that we'll cover tomorrow, as we always do in the M3 Active Trader class. So, uh, okay, thanks everybody. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. T for the hugs and uh we'll see you guys again next week take care everyone